How many times a day do you ask yourself, how would I have looked if I knew all of that as a kid? You know what I mean? Because I think, like getting into this more and more, I'm starting to, to think that beauty is acquired, so to speak. And if you raise your kids right, you're like bound to raise supermodels in a sense. Does that make it's, sense? It's, it helps, but it's not that simple. Really? You know, there is a huge genetic component to it. It's not all genetic, but yeah, for you to have really developed properly, your parents would have had to be extremely healthy before they gave birth to you. Okay. You would have had to have had a natural childbirth. You would have had to have been investigated for tongue tie as an infant. You would have had to have been breastfed. Then after significant amounts of time breastfeeding, you would have had to self-wean directly onto tough, chewy foods, no puree, no mush. And then even at that point, you could still have issues with your development and you would need, in addition to continuing perfect habits, you would need the right orthodontic intervention at an early enough age to make even sure that after you're doing everything right. Say that again. Even after doing everything right, chewing on hard food, breastfeeding, yeah. standing straight, no, no mouth breathing. Even after all of that, you might need extra help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is something I discussed with Dr. Courtney Donko on my interview with her last week. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing in a way. It is, uh, it takes the pain away a little bit because you're like, well, fuck, even if I was perfect, I still might have gone sideways. Uh, but in a way, it's terrifying because you're like, fuck, even if I give my kids perfect everything, they could still have bad genes that cause their development to be imperfect. It's scary. And on the other hand, you could have someone with really good genetics who they could have a shit lifestyle as a child and they it's the opposite they still have good development even though they had bad inputs so that's not to say that inputs don't matter of course they do of course they do um it's just to say it's complex hmm. interesting man super interesting yeah and, you know, the, 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 the other thing that you have to consider is epigenetics, which is to say. How your environment affects your genes. Well, I'm specifically thinking epigenetic handoff, which is to say the fact that epigenetics can be inherited, which means that if your parents had bad environment and the cues that their bad environment gave their genes to develop small jaws then their genome has is not Will coded. Tend for the... to have a tendency towards that direction? Yeah, right, exactly. Because their genome is not coding for the proteins that cause big jaws, those genes are shut off by the environmental cues that they had when, uh, whenever. And they can the... pass it over to you? The epigenetics. By code gets... or by their, by their behavior? Genetically, it gets the epigenetic. The epigenetic wow. shutdown of the small jaws could be transferred to you so that even if you had good environment, you're still not coding for the big jaw proteins. Yes, the, it's That's clear now. That's even more mind-blowing than the previous thing you said, man. <laughs> it's sad, man, I know. But yes, it's clear now that epigenetics can be inherited. So Ooh. then you have this cycle. You have this cycle of small jaws that happens.